จากที่ดรกกุลได้แจ้งไว้นะคะการสัมมนาในวันนี้จะแบ่งเป็นทั้งหมด2ช่วงนะคะช่วงแรกเราจะได้รับฟังการบรรยายจากวิทยากรญี่ปุ่นทั้งหมด3ท่าน2ท่านจะผ่านออนไลน์แล้วก็1ท่านเราได้รับเกียรติอย่างสูงเลยท่านเดินทางมาบรรยายให้เราฟังที่นี่เลยนะคะแล้วในช่วงหลังค่ะหลังจากการบรรยายจะมีการเสวนาในหัวข้อโอกาสของซินไบโออินดัสทรีในบริบทประเทศไทยนะคะน่าสนใจมากๆเลยค่ะและจะขออนุญาตเริ่มช่วงแรกของการสัมมนาในวันนี้เลยนะคะแล้วต้องขออนุญาตดำเนินรายการเป็นภาษาอังกฤษค่ะ uh, Good morning all speakers from Japan Thank you very much for um, joining us in NASA Annual Conference 2023 today Now we are pleased to hear um, presentation from the first speaker Professor Kosuke Honda uh, from IC Biotech Osaka University. Before before the presentation, please let me introduce um, for Professor Honda for a little bit. Professor Honda got his PhD from Kyoto University, where he worked uh, as a postdoc, and he started his career uh, in. Hyundai or Osaka University since 20, uh, 2005, and since 2019, he has become professor at IC Biotech, Osaka University. Professor Honda received many awards in his career life, such as Young Scientist Award from Japanese Society of Enzyme Engineering in 2015, and Encouragement Award from the Society for Biotechnology in 2018. Now it is my great honor to invite Professor Honda to talk on title, design and implementation of artificial metabolic pathway in vitro. And all participants, join me to welcome Professor Honda, please. <laughs> Professor Honda, if you are ready, please kindly start your presentation. Okay, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Now let me start to share my screen. Now, can you see the presentation slide? Can you, can you see my slide? Yes, we can see the slide now. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you once again for the kind of introduction. And uh, um, it's a bit pity that I cannot uh, join this wonderful conference in person. Uh, nevertheless, I'm very happy to uh, having this uh, great chance to uh, talk about our uh, recent uh, research project on the uh, construction of an uh, in vitro metabolic pathway. So, um, as all of you know, um, the metabolic engineering uh, and uh, followed by the fermentation, uh, fermentative production of the uh, useful chemicals. Uh, are now involved in the many uh, industrial sectors uh, like food, chemical, uh, pharmaceutical, and also environment like energy. So uh, um, if we consider about the uh, carbon recycling and the resource recycling, uh, the metabolic engineering and the fermented production of the chemical using micro engineered microorganisms will be more and more important. Meanwhile, uh, we also have to uh, uh, point out uh, there is some uh, technical limitation in the current uh, conventional metabolic engineering. For example, uh, in this slide, I show the uh, very uh, brief illustration of the uh, conventional metabolic pathway in uh, representative microorganisms. So. By engineering this metabolic pathway, if we want to produce ethanol from glucose, so what kind of uh, metabolic engineering we should introduce to these uh, microorganisms? The, actually, the most straightforward way is to stop, to shut down this uh, coexisting pathway then uh, we can convert, we can expect uh, that uh, glucose is converted into ethanol with a um, conversion yield of 100%. But unfortunately, this kind of metabolic engineering cannot be done because um, this pathway, the pentose phosphate pathway, TCA cycle, or uh, acetyl-CoA uh, pyruvate oxidation is 
involved in the biosynthesis of uh, nucleic acid, amino acid, or lipid, and this kind of uh, essential metabolite. So if we stop this uh, reaction, so that means the microorganisms cannot produce, uh, cannot synthesize this metabolite and cannot grow or survive anymore. So uh, in this meaning, the metabolic engineering is somewhat like a um, tug of war between the uh, microorganisms and human beings. The, mo the most important uh, you know, task for the microorganisms is to maintain their growth and survival. By contrast, uh, what is important for us human beings is always about money. So how we can uh, produce the uh, commercially valuable product by using the fermentation technology. So uh, to solve uh, this conflict between the microorganisms and human beings, so um, what we uh, what our group is trying is the separation of metabolic pathway from the physiological activity of uh, microorganisms. In other words, uh, we are trying to construct a um, metabolic pathway specialized for chemical manufacturing out of the cell. And we call uh, these techniques in vitro metabolic engineering. And uh, <laughs> to achieve this goal, our group is uh, focusing on the uh, enzymes derived from sound files. The sound files are the group of microorganisms uh, which can grow at very high temperatures, high temperature environment. So you may know in Japan, uh, we have so many hot spring or volcano, uh, which means uh, we have uh, many the natural habitat for uh, those uh, sound files the high, high temperature uh, growing microorganisms. For example, this uh, bacterium, Samsung Phyllis, was isolated from a hot spring in Shizuoka prefecture. And uh, it has an optimum growth temperature around 75 degrees Celsius. And these two microbes uh, belong to um, categorized in Archaea, the Thruhorba stocodi having an optimal growth temperature of 18, and some Corpus has um, uh, 85 degrees Celsius. Both of them are also isolated from uh, the, the uh, natural habitat in Japan. So, which means uh, we in Japan, uh, you know, uh, the Japan is one of the leading uh, country uh, in the uh, research field of uh, this kind of you know, thermophilic microorganisms or other uh, extremophilic microorganisms. So uh, what we did for the construction of uh, in vitro metabolic pathway or as an enzyme cascade using thermophilic enzyme is uh, as shown in this slide. The first, uh, in step one, uh, we isolated the genes encoding the uh, metabolic uh, enzymes in uh, some files and expressed uh, those uh, enzyme enzyme genes in mesophilic host like uh, E. coli. So, you know, um, because some phytic micro microorganisms are adapted to a um, high temperature environment. So uh, their biomolecules, including enzymes and proteins, are also adapted to a um, high temperature environment. So most of uh, proteins uh, found in mesophilic uh, organisms are denatured at the high temperature environment, like 70 or 80 degrees Celsius. But uh, the enzymes uh, from the, these thermophilic and um, microorganisms are adapted to those high temperature environment. So after expressing the uh, metabolic enzymes from uh, thermophilic uh, microorganisms in mesophilic organisms, just by uh, heating, uh, incubating uh, the crude lysate of uh, these recombinant mesophilic cells at high temperature. 
you know, the enzymes or proteins uh, derived from the host strain E. coli is denatured by heating, and only the recombinant sampleic enzyme could retain their activity. So finally, um, by assembling these heat purified, uh, heat purified recombinant sulfuric enzymes in a single reactor, then uh, we can uh, prepare, construct an uh, in vitro metabolic pathway or uh, enzyme cascade with sulfuric enzymes. Now I like to show you one example of uh, our in vitro metabolic pathway. Uh, in this work, we constructed um, the Endermeyerhof pathway, the glycolytic pathway. So the uh, left uh, hand is the uh, conventional uh, EM pathway, which is found in most of bacteria or eukaryotic uh, cells. So as you can see, he, uh, glucose is oxidized into two molecules of pyruvate, and during the conversion, uh, two molecules of uh, ATP are consumed, and the two four molecules of ATP are uh, produced. So, uh, in total, two molecules of ATP are produced from uh, one molecule of glucose. So, of course, uh, we can construct this pathway in vitro by using the uh, glycolytic enzymes from sulfuric organisms, but. If we want to use this in vitro metabolic pathway for the production of pyruvate to glucose, which means we have to discard two molecules of ADP to produce two molecules of pyruvate. So if we think about which is more expensive uh, between ADP and pyruvate, the answer is quite clear. ADP is, of course, more expensive. So uh, the bioconversion of glucose to pyruvate using this in vitro metabolic pathway is, uh, you know, nonsense. The meaningless from the beauty, from the viewpoint of economics. So what we did uh, to overcome this limitation is, so you know, we focused on this, you know, the modified uh, EM pathway found in some of uh, hypersomphic archaea. So as you can see uh, in this pathway, I will skip the detail, but uh, in this pathway, uh, they use like um, somewhat abnormal enzyme with very unique cofactor specificity like ADP dependent kinase. So uh, actually what we did is we swapped these two enzymes in classic EM pathway with this gap N. Um, the enzyme in a modified EM pathway in Archaea, and we constructed such a chimeric EM pathway in vitro. So, you know, in this pathway, two molecules of ATP are produced, and two molecules of ATP are consumed, and the two molecules of ATP are produced at the last step. So, you know, uh, still um, this pathway requires uh, ATP or ADP. But uh, those cofactors are continuously recycled because their consumption and uh, production is totally balanced. So we constructed this pathway using the uh, recombinant sulfuric enzyme, and we integrated the another enzyme, the lactate dehydrogenase, to uh, balance not only between ATP and ADP but also uh, between a NAD plus and NADH. And these uh, cofactors are continuously recycled during the bioconversion through uh, this in vitro metabolic pathway. And uh, the finally, uh, we could uh, produce uh, about uh, 12 millimolar of uh, lactate uh, from uh, 6 millimolar of glucose. Now, which means the overall conversion yield from glucose to lactate was about 100%, and the ATP could be successfully recycled more than 30 times. In this way, uh, we have uh, constructed uh, we have constructed many in vitro metabolic pathways for the production of this compound from glucose uh, or glycerol or even chitin. 
and as well as the construction of these uh, in vitro metabolic pathways for chemical production. We are also uh, trying to develop some supporting technology to enhance the feasibility of our in vitro metabolic pathway. So owing to the time limitation today, I will focus on only some of this, uh, these topics. So first I will talk about this one, ATP regeneration. So as we could see, uh, ATP or NAD is a very important, uh, expensive, but uh, indispensable uh, compound to uh, facilitate, to implement the enzymatic reaction out of the cells. And uh, it, particularly ATP is required for the, uh, you know, the, some uh, energy requiring, uh, energy uh, requiring uh, uh, enzymatic reaction. So until now, uh, some enzymes are used for the ATP uh, regeneration of ATP uh, using uh, up in, in the in vitro enzymatic reaction. But uh, they have some um, disadvantage, for example, uh, this one, creatine kinase or acetate kinase, they requires this uh, very expensive uh, substrate for the, uh, as a, uh, a phosphate donor uh, to phosphorylate ADP into ATP. So uh, compared with them, uh, this compound polyphosphate is uh, rather cheap and uh, economically feasible. But unfortunately, the polyphosphate is, uh, have a very strong chelating activity to uh, remove the metal ion from uh, reaction mixture. And those uh, metal ion is often required for some enzyme reaction. So uh, this ATP regeneration system using the polyphosphate kinase is not compatible with uh, metal-dependent enzymes. So uh, what we did to overcome this ATP issue is so we constructed uh, such an in vitro metabolic pathway. Now, actually, uh, this uh, pathway was originally uh, designed uh, by this group. Uh, more than 10 years ago, but uh, we um, obtained these enzymes involved in this metabolic pathway from thermophilic sources, and we constructed such a, a plasmid encoding uh, uh, all of the enzymes that uh, included in this uh, metabolic pathway, the non oxidative glycolytic pathway, and co-expressed all of the enzymes in a single E. coli strain. So by doing this, just by cultivating only one recombinant E. coli strain uh, and uh, heating them, incubating the crude extract of this, rec this recombinant E. coli at high temperature, uh, we could uh, prepare the enzyme cocktail um, containing all of these enzymes. So by doing this, uh, we could uh, regenerate uh, three molecules of ATP from one molecule of uh, glucose derived from starch. And uh, this uh, figure shows the performance of uh, this uh, ATP regeneration system using non-oxidative glycolytic pathway. So uh, in this study, we use the phosphorylation of uh, glycerol to glycerol 3 phosphate to monitor the ATP regeneration rate. So uh, as you can see here, from uh, 0.1 millimolar of ADP, we could produce uh, more than 30 millimolar of glycerol 3 phosphate, uh, which means the ADP could be recycled into ATP uh, more than 300 times. Uh, we also extended uh, our uh, in vitro uh, non oxidative glycolytic pathway uh, by integrating these enzymes. And then so we could, uh, so in this uh, study, we uh, to focus on the uh, glycosylation of some chemicals uh, to see the performance of this. Uh, so expand, extended pathway, and we, you, uh, we check the uh, production of trehalose from glucose. And uh, the result is still need to be uh, improved, uh, but uh, we could confirm the uh, production of trehalose uh, by 
from glucose using this pathway. The other topic is uh, stabilization of NAD or NADH. So, sorry, the time is uh, almost coming, so I, I will uh, go uh, quickly. So, at the, you know, the NADA, NAD or NADH is also very important for factor to implement enzyme reaction, but actually they are not stable at high temperature. So, uh, we uh, tried to uh, overcome this limitation by constructing this uh, in vitro metabolic pathway by which NAD could be desynthesized from its thermal degradation product from ATP and ADP ribose and nicotine amide. So as you can see, uh, with and the result in vitro metabolic pathway for the NAD uh, cycling, uh, you can see uh, the uh, pure size of NAD uh, could be uh, successfully maintained uh, by, uh, by using this in vitro metabolic pathway. Now, actually, this, uh, you know, the salvage synthetic pathway of NAD is involved in uh, the living cells, uh, including some vehicle microorganisms. So we also uh, tested the impact, the, uh, check the importance of this NAD uh, salvage pathway in some vehicle microorganisms. So we disrupted a genes encoding an enzyme involved in this uh, NAD salvage synthetic pathway. And then what we found is this is a wild type and this is a gene disruptant mutant. So by uh, when the, uh, the NAD salvage synthesizing enzyme is uh, knocked out, uh, the mutant cannot grow at a higher temperature. So which means the uh, NAD homeostasis, the maintenance of intracellular uh, concentration of NAD is a very important factor to maintain the uh, and the sound fires to survive at a very high temperature. So actually, this is somewhat not application, but a fundamental study. But uh, this kind of fundamental study is always uh, important to facilitate uh, our scientific knowledge. And uh, finally, uh, those uh, new knowledge can be applied to uh, develop something new. Uh, so this kind of, uh, you know, uh, so actually, so he is a uh, Louis Pasteur, the very famous uh, microbiologist in French. So as he said, the uh, science, the fundamental science, and uh, its application is always uh, important. So they are something like uh, uh, the fruit and the tree, which bears it, as he said. Okay, so uh, lastly, I'd like to thank to uh, my laboratory member uh, who are involved in this uh, project work, and also uh, I'd like to thank to the financial uh, support from the, uh, the this agency and uh, research programs. Thank you very much for the uh, kind attention. Thank you very much, Professor Honda, for sharing your excellent presentation about metabolic uh, engineering in uh, to, to, to get the desired production. So um, for the participants, both in this auditorium room and also um, in Facebook Live, if you would like to ask any question or comments to Professor Honda, you can scan QR code that you uh, received in the document uh, at, the, the, at the top QR code. You can scan and then put your question or comments in uh, Slido platform. Is there any is there any question from the floor? Or if you if if any participants in this auditorium room have any question, you can raise your hand and I can bring microphone to you. I think we we still have time, maybe five minutes for Q and A in this uh, for this uh, speaker. And if there is no question at the moment, I may take a chance to ask Professor Honda, um, please. Honda Sensei, thank you very much yes. for your presentation again. Can I, can I have one question? Um, yes. I, I, think, I think to drive deep science uh, for, to the application, 
not related to, to the work that you have presented, but I think um, to, to drive deep science to application, we scientists and researchers may, may need a big support, especially for financial support. So could you please share us in Japan, how do you get supported to, to do deep science, please? Uh, actually, so there are several different, <laughs> I, I suppose this kind of question should be asked to the uh, next speaker, but uh, well. <laughs> he, he is from, uh, uh, you know, the uh, funding agency, but, uh, but actually, so we in Japan, there are several different types of funding. The one is for, you know, the application and another is focusing more on the fundamental science. So, for example, so the, uh, among this uh, research project, uh, three of them, the, the Kakenhi Crest or Crest is focusing um, more on the uh, fundamental science. Meanwhile, uh, the, this uh, program is uh, to support the application, um, particularly uh, in collaboration with uh, academia and uh, private companies. So, um, depends on our research purpose, uh, so we can apply to the different uh, research funding. Okay, thank you. Is there any question from, from the floor? So, thank you very much, Professor Honda. Now, we don't have uh, any question for you, but if any, yeah. uh, if we get some question or comments in in our slido platform uh, we, we can send those comments and question to you thank you very much again thank you.